Hello, beautiful visionaries. This is Lorna Liana, and today I am so excited to bring to you a brother uh, and friend of mine by the name of Oscar Matsuwa, who I've had the great honor of being able to sit with in ceremony on a number of occasions in Brazil um, at the biannual gathering of my spiritual family um, called uh, uh, the Condor Eagle Tribe. And so Oscar um, was born in Aome, Sinaloa, Mexico, which is the home of Uremi culture, which he descends from on his mother's side. He grew up partaking in spiritual rituals, ceremonies, and sacred dance. Since an early age, he's been interested in learning about indigenous cultures and their spirituality around the world. And this led him to study anthropology in the National School of Anthropology and History in Mexico City, where he met different indigenous leaders who then became his teachers. And together, they organized sweat lodges and sacred ceremonies in the Quilquilco, Pyramids, which is an ancient site that is part of the university grounds. At present, Oscar is the director of a cultural association in Barcelona called Roots of the Heart of the Earth, which is dedicated to bridging knowledge of indigenous cultures and organizing events where elders can meet and share their wisdom. Thank you so much for joining us today, Oscar. You're welcome. So I would love to hear a little bit about your journey. So. Um, you know, your biography um, shares with us your interest and how you began to study anthropology, but there's a certain point in which one uh, starts to transition from becoming a participant to becoming somebody that facilitates ceremonies. So I would love if you might share with us what that moment was like for you and um, uh, which lineage in particular you are most aligned with that you now, uh, whose practices you now share? Okay, uh, yes, my journey started when I was a child with my family. Uh, my family always uh, teach me the spirituality. Um, we were doing ceremonies since child, uh, uh, working uh, with the plants, with the element, with the spirits. Yeah, but when I start more deep was in my university. Uh, when I had the, some visions, like a calling of Mother Earth, and I, for me, that was my initiation. And my vision was I, I saw the heart of our Mother Earth. Um, shining and calling. And also from the heart of the Mother Earth, uh, that was like a lines that looks like roots. And this root was connected with all the hearts of all the, the beings in, in this Earth. Um, and like that, um, that was uh, like calling for me to, to start my spirituality more deep. And like that, since that moment, I start to connect with many uh, tribes, elders, and um, um, just was like um, a guidance for me since that moment. Um, and like that, I start to to do a lot of healing in the sweat lodge, the sweat lodges. Um, um, like that, I start to do the vision quest, uh, to do fastings. Uh, and also start my uh, my pilgrimage in the Biricuta Desert is now since 13 years ago. Um, and like that, um, with all this, I start to to travel with the elders, uh, and we start to do ceremonies. And now they allow me to 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 run my own ceremonies, and they give the permits to work with the medicine, with the sweat loss, with the vision quest, and it's a little bit of my journey. So when you receive permission from the elders, what does that look like? Yeah, this special ceremonies, uh, initiation, they talk with you, but they need to, to show you, you know, how you work, uh, how you're doing, 
just now in the ceremony, no, also in your life, uh, uh, like that, uh, they trust in you, and, and they they also support uh, in the prayers, no, uh, in the spirituality. They give this force for you can work, and they they are giving uh, this strength and this support for everything you do, because. My, my elders, they're always doing ceremony, and, and we are connect in this world. Mm -hmm. So is there a period of time that you specifically train with the understanding that this is leading for your initiation? For example, do you train for a few years knowing that the intention is for you to start leading ceremonies with the blessing of the elders? Yeah, uh, for the sweat lodge, we call here Temascal. Um, I need to to be ten years. Uh, uh, the five, the first five years was just service. I was working in the fire, you know, learning the chants, uh, just giving service to for the community, going to different uh, circles of fire, work with a lot of communities just giving service and after five years uh, I start to to run my my sweat mm -hmm. uh, also for the ceremony I, I also need be five years first going to Birikuta every year to give offering to connect with the spirit of the of the hikuri of the peyori um, and like that I start to to feel uh, the communication with this plan because it's just you come in like uh, like a friend you make a friend and you go to visit every year uh, you go to offering uh, you give, you go to give thanks and pay back everything there the teachings they are doing no? and it's like it's your friend but also it's your master and then you go to you need to go every year to to continue the teachings so given that there is a process of initiation and a lot of service that you have to do before the elders at a certain point decide and bless you. I'm curious to know, Oscar, what do you think about many Western facilitators who, you know, they might drink some ayahuasca, they might have some, you know, peyote experience or, you know, uh, work with San Pedro and then all of a sudden they decide, it's time for me to start serving medicine. The peyote told me, or the ayahuasca told me, and they start to be able to offer it to other people without doing any of the many years of service or initiation work that you went through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very delicate, uh, these cases, because um, it's dangerous also for the people who do that without preparation, because uh, war with the spirit uh, needs a commitment. And, and like I said before, you need to, to know your friend, know your master, know the place where they born, with, where they live. And if you don't have this connection, okay, you, can, you will give your energy. But if you give all the time your energy, some point you can uh, get sick. Uh, and, and then the, it's a little bit dangerous like that because really the the energy to do the healing is the spirit but if you don't have this connection with the spirit uh, you will lose in your energy and then in that moment can be dangerous for the, the people you're putting the people in danger by opening portals uh, and also you are putting um, uh, in danger of the people for open portals, you don't know how to hold them. And this mm -hmm. is very delicate for, for this kind of work. Good, possessed people. Also, there are cases that there are uh, possessed people, uh, you need to go work very deep. It's, it's, you need, need a lot of preparation for do all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Is there any advice that you would have for these Western facilitators uh, in order to be able to get the, the appropriate training uh, so that 
we can avoid, they can avoid these dangers. Yeah, you know, it's not also Western, no? There are native people who also is not preparing for do this mm -hmm. kind of work, and they're just doing for business, no? But mm -hmm. they, they, they need uh, to prepare very good, no? To be honest with themselves, to really uh, share something good, uh, because, like I say, it's, it's a delicate and it's dangerous for themselves, no? Humility. And also, is need a lot of humility to to know or, or to know where you are and, mm -hmm. and you know uh, take the time not to learn no? it's like a new university no it's five years just for a start but but never end you continue all the time you can't be a doctor yeah you cannot be a doctor in one month no? You, mm -hmm. you know, you need a, a really, really commitment with this, this work. I really appreciate how you mentioned that it's not just Westerners, but also, you know, other people, even from the South, that are um, offering these medicines because it has become a business in many of these countries because there's so many uh, people um, from outside that, are, that have the resources that are participating in plant medicine tourism. And one of the things that I also noticed in, you know, the, the years that I've been walking this path is, you know, being in the United States, um, I would see a number of the curanderos from Peru, you know, traveling through um, the United States and, you know, Canada, and they would offer ceremonies and, you know, make a lot of money doing it. And it's interesting because, you know, when you would hear the story of this individual and then discover who the person learned all of this from, uh, sometimes the true, some of the true wisdom keepers, the, the indigenous um, uh, pages or, or the, the, the curanderos, they, they don't leave the jungle, many of them. Mm. They don't leave the jungle, they don't travel to the city. So, you know, there is also something to be aware of, you know, in terms of um, the level of training that individuals have, uh, regardless of where they might be from, um, you know, culturally or, um, or nationally. So thank you for highlighting that the apprenticeship process is at a fundamental level, um, something that um, needs to be paid attention to, the training and the apprenticeship is something to consider, um, regardless of where the person's from. So I would love to know more about the work that you do ceremonially, because I've sat in ceremony with you a number of times. Um, and while I um, you know, have prayed with you and um, eaten the sacred peyote, the hikuri, um, I haven't really truly understood much of um, the way that you hold the ceremony. So can you share with us more about this ceremonial work? Yes, uh, my preparation for, for uh, arrived to this point to hold a ceremony. Um, for me, uh, I like to go deep um, in the teachings. Um, and also, um, I'm studying the, the three big lines to, to work with the peyote. Um, the fierce and the most ancient is the Wirarika, Wirarika people. Um, but also, there are here the Chichimeca people, they're like dancers here. They also work with the peyote. And, uh, and the, the, all the line of the Native American church is in, more in the north. Um, I'm I'm going uh, with these three line three lines uh, working and learning with different elders. That gives me a, a big vision about all this work and how we can connect all all these three big lines of work with the peyote. Um, and yes. Um, um, Today I'm working in some ceremonies. I have people from the Native American Church. I have people from 
Chichi Mecca people, uh, Ponchero people, and Wirarica people. No, that was my dream to unify these three lines uh, to learn more about because in the and in the end is come from the same root. All these uh, three big lines come from the same root, uh, and there are a moment we can connect all together. Um, my ceremony when when I I graduate from my school, I, I run a ceremony, and they come in people from Wirarica, Chichimeca. That was my, my ceremony, my dream. I, I want to see, no, unify the, the tribes, uh, unify the people who work with the peyote. Um, and yeah, that give me a lot of um, tools to work, like using different instruments. I like to use the water drum, the rattle, I like to use the tobacco. I like to use also the the cuentas, the concha de armadillo. It's a like guitar from Chichimeca people. I like to use the uh, the mubieris. Uh, there's the the sacred feathers the Urarica use. Um, and now I'm working more in this in this um, in this altar with the Wirarica, because the Wirarica is the the older one and also give the opportunity to to share uh, with more people because there are other altars that are more like close just yes, they want to do like like they do but it's not open for other people no and the word I want and the vision I have is like unify more people uh, the people can pray whatever they they, they know no? if they want to pray like Native American church it's okay the people want to use the, the conchas, the cuentas, the chichimeca, it's okay. If the people can just wanna talk, sing like the Wirarica, it's okay. And like that is, I'm focused on that, in how to unify all the peyoteros in, in North America. So Wirarica, uh, are the Wiraricas also known as the Huicholes? Yes. Who um, uh, was it that came up with the name Huichol? Is it what the anthropologists call them, and they call themselves the Wiraricas, or how did we end up with the other name? Yeah, Wiraricas is the name of the language also. Okay. And Wiraricas, the people uh, who looks for the deep knowledge. Um, and then Wichol was a name the, the Spanish gave, gave them, like means like the, the ones who run to the mountains. Mm. Which all was so not good for them, but they they call themselves Wiraritaris, Wiraricas. Mm -hmm. And can you describe some of the differences in uh, these three different lineages? Yeah, is uh, the Wiraricam um, is is the most ancient. They can keep the 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 tradition because. Like they go to to the mountains to to keep the knowledge there, um, and like that, the 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 Spanish people they come in later, uh, like hundred years ago, but also they don't stay there. Just yes, they come, they want to put a small church, but they living no, and they leave the saints also there. Uh, but the Wiraricas people after that they they put clothes like Wiraricas to the saints and then. They use the, the same they live to continue working and prayer on the way they do. Um, and like that, they, they can keep a lot of knowledge. Um, also in the communities, there are people who doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, uh, there's a lot of elders, uh, a lot of knowledge in the mountains. There's the sacred temples there. They continue using, uh, and like that, they, they are ones to hold this big tradition. No? Um, after that, uh, also the Chichimeca people who live around from north, uh, east, and center of Mexico, uh, the place where the peyote grow, they also uh, was working a, a lot. But, but in that, that places, the, the church, the Catholic, the Spanish people can come more easy. And then and they, they do like secretism, cultural syncretism. Uh, and, and like that, they was uh, relate with the Christian uh, Christianists, 
um, the the music, the use of the guitars, uh, come more from them. But there are some lines from Chichimeca Conchero people that are still holding the ancient knowledge. They know the meaning of the all the saints uh, before was a, a, a god, a Mexica god, uh, and then the Spanish changed. But they know this this change they, the church did. And this is very important because they they can keep the the tradition and the knowledge. And also the, the Native American church, um, uh, that, that was when the, the English people come in the state, uh, the English kill a lot of people and they put all in reservations. Um, and then the peyote grow, the most of the peyote grows in Mexico. Uh, there's just, there is a little part in Texas when the peyote grows, but before 200 years ago was Mexico over there. Um, but the people start to, to learn with the, from the, pay, from the Wiradica people. Uh, like uh, there's a sto story of the uh, Alakota come to, with the Maracames, with the elders, Wiradicas, and they come from he for healing. Um, um, the Maracames help him, they give the medicine, they give the, the tail of the deer to for take the peyote medicine to his people. Um, and they go back to, to, to the north um, and they start to share this medicine with the, the community there. Um, but in that, that time, the people was living, a lot of uh, nations was living all together in reservations. Uh, they, the English people put all together living in reservation and they start to share this medicine with, with, with other tribes. Um, and like that, they start to, to make this kind of ceremony. We, we know now like the half moon ceremony. And after that, they create the, the, the Native American church. Um, and like that, the peyote helped them a lot to, to keep um, resistance uh, from the conquest and keep the tradition, keep the knowledge. And the peyote helped a lot for that. Unify the tribes. And then help to unify also the tribes. Can you share with us, um, what is a maracame? Uh, the maracame uh, in the Wirarica tradition is the means uh, the the ones to know how to heal him, how to sing, how to dream. Uh, is the in the Western they call like shaman, but uh, we call like the curandero, like the ones to know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, could you share with us? Um, the traditional and medicinal use of peyote in North America. How has it been used and, and for how long do we know it has been used in this way? Yeah, okay. The, let's talk about um, the traditional of the pe uses of the peyote. Um, the peyote is a sacrament for the native people of Mexico as well as the Native American also. Um, they use it. They use it in different sacred ceremonies according to every culture, such as healing. They use it in weddings, in initiation, in seed planting and harvest. Also for invoke the rain, invoke the spirit. Um, there are many uses. Uh, the peyote uh, is always in the daily life or in the special ceremonies. Um, or ritual for different uh, nations. Um, the, with the purpose to expand the conscious, consciousness, receive guidance, open the heart, connect deeper to Mother Earth, receive vision of our missions, and many, many other things that are used in the traditional way. Hello. And, and then the the peyote is is using like since many many thousands of years uh, 
there are some sacred stones where the peyote is there that probably have two, three thousand of years of the, the archaeologists say that was used before. So, which is the lineage that has been working with peyote in an unbroken manner for this for these thousands of years? Would that be the um, the Wiarica? Yeah. Before that, I would like to mention about the medicine medicinal uses also because okay. I, I mentioned um, also the peyote can be prepared as different medicines such as ointments, uh, tinctures, microdosings, capsules, syrups, compress, or can be eaten fresh to treat different symptoms uh, or disease, like uh, treat like muscle pain, arthritis, uh, wounds, bites from poison animals, infections, activate the immuno immunologic system, uh, improve the uh, improves the circulatory system, also fever, depression, anxiety, uh, and help with addictions, migraines, and also help to the ne neuron regeneration. This is one of the uses uh, the people use actually all, and also before. So um, it, are there any risks or dangers in the consumption of peyote? For example, is if a person ate too much, could they overdose? No overdose, but uh, pero, uh, we need to uh, take care of a lot of the people who start uh, because it uh, can be very strong experience. And we need to take care of these people who just start uh, um, for don't uh, be so strong for them for the, the first time, because when when you have preparation, you can go more more deep, more high. But uh, when you start, you can go slowly. There is no risks. It's just the spiritual space. Uh, also, it's not risks. It's it's also uh, we need to know how to hold in the spiritual space also for them. But I think so. It's going slowly, you not know, so 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 strong for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to discover more about the um, uh, Wiarica culture, because it sounded like what you shared was that they um, have been the oldest lineage. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so can you share with us what their cosmology is like and what some of the ancient rituals um, that, are, that are still being practiced today among these people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the peyote is a, it has a really important role in the in the ritual calendar of the Wirarica culture. Uh, every year, around these times, uh, we do a pilgrimage to the sacred desert of Virikuta, where peyote original come from. Um, this ritual has been done for thousands of years to leave offerings to the spirit. Uh, give thanks and ask for teachings. It's the, the place when we prepare for, for be marakames, for, uh, for learn everything about the peyote. Uh, in the past, it was done by foot, but, uh, but it could take up uh, to two months. Today, this is not viable anymore, as many of the paths have been closed for the privacy, all these things. Mm -hmm. um, the, this pilgrimage is a mystical journey in search of the ancestors. Um, and they help to receive the visions and the spiritual knowledge uh, and the sacred sacrament of Hikuri, Peyori. Uh, also for us, uh, uh, the guidance and, and I said before, teachings. Um, in this trip, in this pilgrimage, we visit the sacred sites uh, where the gods and sacred essence of the desert live. We go to many points on the way. To stop, we stop to uh, to leave offerings uh, on the spring waters, on the on the heart of the peyote leaf, the heart of the deer. We go to the mountain. Um, 
it's like 15 days of work we need to fast uh, before we don't eat salt in all the trip uh, and also there are imp important things you need to uh, confess all your your sins especially the sexual sin and then you need to talk everything with the fire like clean and uh, purify your mind your spirit for you be able to go deep uh, in these teachings and this is one of the most important before we go into the desert we need to do all this purification um, and like like that uh, is also you do if you want to learn to be a marakame you can do it uh, by yourself or you can do it uh, with your couple if you do it by yourself uh, you need be um, uh, without a partner for five years also without without sex for five years if you are men you cannot touch a, a woman if you are a woman you you cannot touch a man for five years you do it by yourself uh, but you also you can do it married if you do it married uh, you need to respect the times when you use in this medicine and also uh, have a commitment with your partner to don't be with other person just with your partner and this is a commitment for five years it's just for a start uh, the path of the marakame and like that you need go to visit all the sacred uh, places to give the offerings to connect with all the spirit that they will help you to work with this medicine spirit of the deer yeah um, and also uh, we need connect with the spirit of the deer uh, um, the deer is the the protect of the peyote medicine um, is the blue deer um, and this spirit is very powerful and they they ask to do all this commitment if you want to work really with this medicine in truth in honesty because it's, it's like I say a strong commitment uh, we, we saw the, the peyote we call hikuri hikuri is the one of the uh, how we call the, the peyote in our language, in, in with radical language, is hikuri. Um, we, we saw this, this spirit like a sacred teacher. It's a master who teaches us how to live, how to heal people, how to interpret our dreams, and also connect with our higher self to live in peace and harmony. Uh, also, this spirit open up creativity, uh, teach us how to sing, how to play instrument, how to make sacred visionary art. Um, also teach us how to work with the earth, how to plant, how to harvest, everything. This, this is a, a master. You know? Teach us. For be a marakame, a complete marakame, you need to learn all these skills for be like a, a good one. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we was talking about the pilgrimage. Um, uh, yeah, this pilgrimage uh, uh, is also a commitment. Um, you start doing uh, the first five years, uh, or it's like a, the introduce of the culture of is how to you are learning to. Uh, to connect with the spirit of of Hikuri, the blue deer, uh, but this teaching never end. My my elder who have 84 year, he all the life is going to the he he was going to to Birikuta. He still continue learning. He say no, I need to to do more commitments. Still no, it's like a school no. But when you are um, uh, connect with the teachings. You want to to continue, go more deep, advance, no, go more, more deep, continue, no, the teachings and never end. And I like that we need have this humility to to know um, we we are students st students all the life. Um, and yeah, um, and have this connection and this commitments every year with all the spirits. 
um, is, is they give all the strength for for do that, um, and like that you have the the strength to healing people, the strength in your in your ch chants, uh, in all in your voice and your prayers because you are talking with all this energy, um, and like that is the commitment to to do all this work, and is what I recommend to the people who want to. Uh, be like a good marakame. He need to have these uh, commitments, uh, all this sacred place to help to to do the work. Um, and and also uh, other very important element in our in our cosmology is the fire, tatewari. We call tatewari is the grandpa fire. Is is our main guide. Is uh, is the one who teaches us the path. Uh, also protect us in all the ceremonies, in all the work we do. Also, they also teach us how to heal. Um, and we use this energy, the, 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 the fire energy, to heal people. Uh, we work through the, the fire because he helped to transmute in all this negative, uh, all, all this sickness, uh, he transmutes in something good. Um, also, he give uh, he, he give us the light um, and the clarity uh, and show us the, the visions and the sacred messengers of the universe. Um, uh, for us, uh, the fire is our our life library, uh, who shows the history of the universe, um, and we can show in the in the fire the visions. We can when, when you are ready to connect with the fire, uh, uh, he can show you the story of different things. So whatever you, you ask, he will respond you. But you, you need to have this connection. Also, this connection, you need many years to have this connection with the fire. Like that, with the water, with the wind, with the air, takes everything time and, and commitment to, to arrive at this point to have these connections and this communication. That way, that's a, I continue saying, this is a, a strong commitment to uh, a very long way to, to, to go. So for those of us who want to connect more deeply with uh, these traditions, uh, sometimes it's really difficult to know who to sit with. What are mm -hmm. some of the qualities of a good marakame, somebody who is in integrity, who knows what he or she's doing, um, who is going to take care of you um, and uh, you know help you be safe, but also you know teach you so you can be strong and um, claim your reclaim your own power. Yeah, one of the fears is the humility, no, to to accept or to. To know where where you are, in what moment you are in your life, also the intentions that people have to, to do that. This is very important uh, to see what is the intention for for do a ceremony. A person that is not that doesn't have ego. What is a good manakam? Someone who doesn't have ego, who is humility, and who done a lot of work. Yeah. Also, the people uh, who work in, in that, they they need to to. So don't have ego, no. Okay, every everyone have ego, no. But uh, at least you need work a lot inside of you, and 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 yeah, and work yourself, no. Fears you you want to work with other people, and like that is also a commitment. <laughs> you need. She asked, "What? How can she, they they know it's a good marakami?" Yeah, and also uh, it's very important. Uh, the people have a, a community to to support su support them. No, also the intentions when the people do the ceremonies for he's doing something, but for what? Uh, for help the community, for have a project to give back to the earth. This is something also is very important. No, you are doing ceremonies, but you need have a reason. For what you are doing, uh, what you will use this energy you are getting in other places 
putting where, no? For yourself, or for help others, or for give back to the the, the community. Where did they study? How long for? Also, it's, it's very important uh, the time he was study study in all the spirituality in a in a real path. No? This is very important, no? Um, to know how long time he is study in all this uh, all this path. Um, and, uh, and yeah, some things you need to know or or be safe in some spaces. What are your thoughts about the changing culture? So it's interesting. One of the conversations that I've um, you know heard in the Native American church community is um, you know there are some people who. Um, host meetings in a very traditional way, and others that do not fall, uh, follow traditional protocols. And me, you know, just being very, um, you know, not very deeply immersed into uh, these uh, this culture, these ways of working, I have no idea whether something's traditional, something's really, you know, like new and innovative that somebody kind of integrated another cultural practice uh, and so that it's now diverted away from the way that it has always been held. So I'm curious to know, given that culture is always changing, what are your thoughts about the evolution of um, uh, the culture around the ceremon ceremonial use of peyote? Uh, more in the half moon altar, you say, no? Well, you know, I mean, I think in a general question, um, you know, and then also half moon altar as well. Yeah, sure. Let's bring that into the uh, the picture for a specific example. Yes, um, there's like uh, different lines depend of the the indigenous nation to work with the half moon. Everyone say they are the the uh, the original, no. Everyone say this is the 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 way you need to do, it, no. But like I, like I say, this altar is not have not so much years. Uh, you know, it's less than two hundred years. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. that, um, there was a group uh, who was also uh, more in the syncretism with the Catholic. They was using the Bible inside of the the tipis, no. Um, and there were other group. They were saying, "No, no, we don't need nothing about this. We will do just our way, like native way." No? And there always will be people uh, to have this perspective of uh, there are the ones, uh, or there are the right, the the right ones to make the ceremony. But like that, this I think this altar is is also changing all the time, no? The tradition also, they are changing all the time. Um, uh, and yeah, but also I understand a lot of people on the North America, they grow uh, in a military way also, because a lot of people, native people was in the, in the military, in the war, Vietnam, all these things, and they have also these things, uh, also the, the society also changed a lot. The people, the people, it's not the it's not the same. The people who grow in the state, the people who grow in Mexico, there's yeah. a different yeah. mentality. I see that they, they do kneeling up, TP very straight. Yeah, there are guys who they are very military way mm -hmm. to run a ceremony uh, because they have this in in their minds, no? Um, and there are people who was they was using drugs all the time. Native people who was using alcohol and drugs all the time, and they and now when they grow, they are afraid and they are very scary because they was doing or do, doing drugs all the time, drink alcohol, and also it's different with people who grow in a community, who grow in the mountains. They have different mentality. Um, the example they put on the knees all night long. They can go to the toilet. Yeah. Oh my God, I've been, I've been, <laughs> yeah, I've been in that ceremony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there are ceremonies you've been in in your 
uh, knees all night long. You cannot go to the bathroom, or, or it's a, like a military, no? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's okay, no, for them, no. But uh, we are in other times also to to feel more the people, no, to give a, a nice space to the people to understand more the people, no, what they are feeling, how, because. I understand if we are just a group of warriors of native people who want to go straight, okay, let's do it like that, no? Because we are prepared for that. But there are people who is not prepared for do that. There are, you know, people who come sick and they cannot see it all night long. They come a grandmother. They come, you know. We need uh, we need understand everyone in the in the in the space. Explain the difference of how they run ceremony, the Maracamis, and how they run Native American, the violin. Um, yeah, uh, and then uh, the half moon, yeah, is the traditional uses. Uh, uh, is is we the altar we build uh, shapes as a half moon, and the medicine we we sit in in the center like a chief. Uh, who is one who will guide the, the, all this, the ceremony. In this ceremony, uh, uh, this altar is just created specifically for tobacco and peyote use, not for other medicines. Now, uh, we saw people who is using this, this half moon altar to give ayahuasca, to give a San Pedro, to give mushroom, whatever, no? But it's, the, the elders say this is, is just specific for tobacco and, and peyote use. Also, you can you can use this altar without peyote, just with tobacco, because the, the first is the tobacco, because it's the one we connect all our prayers. But you cannot do this half moods altar uh, without tobacco. Mm. You can do it without peyote, but without tobacco you cannot do it. Because we also do these ceremonies without peyote, just tobacco, just prayers, just just music, just songs. And because the the purpose is not the the, the, the peyote. The purpose is the prayer, is the intention you have. And then like that we teach uh, uh, kids, we we teach the child or people who is not uh, connect with the peyote, we can teach with, just with the tobacco, smoking and praying for them. And this is very beautiful also. Uh, use the, this altar for the, the first purpose is to pray and to connect with the fire, connect with the earth, with the wind, uh, with the water, with everything. The, this is the, the, the principal purpose of these ceremonies. Um, yeah, like I said, these ceremonies are different according to the cosmology of each tribe. Uh, everyone, they will sell, tell different things, different stories, different chants. Um, they will use their own language. Um, they will have the, the, their, their traditional songs. Huh? Um, and many like to hold these these ceremonies inside of TP. Uh, also, the TP, the poles represent the, the ribs of our Mother Earth, and the cover represent the skin of Mother Earth. Um, is is considered a sacred temple, like is the the church, you know? uh, Yeah, this is a, a resistant altar, no? Resistance altar, which helped to preserve the the culture of many uh, North American tribe, um, guided by the peyote, no? gave them the strength to save their their traditions, um, um, and like that they they unify uh, the people there because before they have like uh, fights with each tribe, the peyote um, give this love to to be each other. In, in the in the reservations and like that, that's that's why they create this beautiful half moon altar, no? To pray, to unify, to share the culture, to preserve the the language, no? Mm -hmm. So we're coming to the end of our um, interview time, and I wanted to ask you, Oscar, a really important question that you know. 
Um, I want to invite everyone who's listening to really contemplate. So for those of us who come into connection with uh, the sacred medicines and uh, the different uh, paths, the different caminos of you know walking um, uh, uh, this way um, in these spiritual lineages, or perhaps even for those of us who are interested but have not had the opportunity to really visit um, the native cultures and might be practicing in the United States in a much more of a non-traditional context. What are your thoughts on how we can work with uh, Hikori, work with the sacred peyote, and be in right relationship to this medicine and to the indigenous cultures that hold this medicine sacred? Yeah, I think the first thing, the people who want to connect with this sacred medicine is come to, to the desert to visit where the peyote grows, because it's the, it's the way you can connect with this, this medicine, is honoring this medicine, come to give an offering, ask permits for straight with the medicine, non, don't need be like a, all the time uh, a shaman, uh, but the, the real shaman, the real marakami is the medicine, is the spirit of this medicine. They will, they will teach you. There are many good marakamis in the United States. And... Yeah, there are, there are, yeah, there are good uh, many marakamis to travel sometimes to states. Um, in Mexico, you can go straight to the communities to visit them, to feel them, um, and also to see how to live the people there. No, you're saying the people they cannot travel. How can they have to look for a good aligned? Yeah, and the the people who cannot travel, yeah, but we can contact with the nice people, with the nice maracames, and, and yeah, and. Um, yeah, I hope they can travel safe. It's, it's a hard work also travel to different countries, no? Um, but yeah, there are people who who have the permits to do that also. Um, and yes, it's, it's open the the way uh, for people to come to Mexico and, and people who, who cannot travel, there people can fly them also to visit them. I would like to offer a suggestion too. I feel that um, first it needs to start with a sincere desire to want to connect with the medicine in a more deep way and to connect with the cultures um, that work with this medicine in a living spiritual lineage. And you know, once you have that intention, then magic starts to happen where you will find out, you will be connected, um, or people will come into your life that have those relationships, and then the doors will open. So there's a bit of an alchemical, you know, magic involved in wanting to make that connection. And then, you know, on a practical level too, if you do not have the ability to travel to Mexico, um, there may be a local, regular sweat lodge community in your uh, locale. I know that when I was uh, living in San Francisco, there were a number of uh, uh, sweat lodge sites and people that would gather on a regular basis. And when you start to get to know the community, then you'll start to discover some of the um, the uh, other types of events that are happening. You know, you get uh, there is the opening or invitation to get more involved. You know, uh, Sundance, for example. You know, visiting teachers. So it all starts with the genuine intention. And then once you have that, then, you know, as they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Of course. Yeah. yeah so, is a, yes. Um, so Oscar, I wanted to ask if you have any um, closing thoughts and then also to ask how people can uh, best stay in touch with you. Yes. Um, yes, I just uh, I want to give thanks to you. Uh, for doing your beautiful work to and to trust in us to to share a little bit of our culture uh, uh, yeah I just 
um, I want to give thanks also uh, to all the teacher, the true teacher who will helping the people uh, to is uh, to there are who is introducing the people to the spirituality of the native uh, uh, from North America, especially here in our land in Mexico. <clears throat> we are very grateful for for uh, have the possibility to to learn all these uh, beautiful teachings of this beautiful spirituality exists here in in, in our land. And yeah, and just uh, welcome to you to come also to visit us in the in Biricuta in our land. Yes. Um, and how can I, people reach you to do that? Uh, just we can connect. I don't know Facebook or or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Facebook or Aniwa Aniwa dot com. Aniwa, yeah. Aniwa, okay. With my partner Vivian. Yeah, we will be in touch also. We have some uh, sites in in Facebook with the association uh, Raíces del Corazón de la Tierra in Spain, and yeah, and also we have we are doing the Kiva in the UK in July, and we also we are doing the Kiva every year in our land here in Nayarit, Mexico. Uh, also, you are welcome to come to join us and meet elders from here. Keep the website of the Kiva. Uh, no Heart of the Earth. Uh, we have the website of the Kiva, heartoftheearth.com. Uh, heartoftheearth.org. Okay. Uh, you can also visit and come to UK. <laughs> we will be there in July, final of July. I will put the links down below this video so people can get in touch that way. So um, I too want to thank you, Oscar, uh, for your trust in me to be mm -hmm. able to receive um, your stories and your knowledge and wisdom. I know that for many people, it's a, you know, it's a consideration to be able to speak about the culture and the wisdom and traditions, especially to another individual, especially uh, through video on a recorded interview. So thank you so much for your trust in me to be able to hold your message and to be able to share it in a way that um, is in alignment. Uh, thank you. Um, so sorry for my English is not so good. I would like uh, to express different in Spanish. I can express uh, better, but I do my best. <laughs> thank you, my dear. I think you did great. And I'm going to wish you a beautiful rest of your day and have a beautiful, powerful, wisdom filled pilgrimage to Widikuta. Blessings for that journey. Thank, thank you so much. We send bless for everyone from them, from Widikuta. <laughs> <laughs>